All right. Uh, so my name is Bill Fisher, and I'm an independent, independent software developer in Arizona. And so in a past life, uh, I developed software for network management, particularly using SNMP, the simple network management protocol. So today I'm going to talk about the Zoff framework that I created, and I'm going to talk about how it uses a C++ microservice underneath it called OFTR, OpenFlow Translator, which is basically the thing that does the work for Zoff, and Zoff is actually pretty small. Um, I'm also going to talk about how I have ported Faucet to run on Zoff. Sort of Faucet is now hosted in Zoff instead of being hosted in Ryu. Um, and I'm also going to mention uh, how Faucet Test Suite helps me to develop Zoff, because without this, I would be basically flying blind and crashing into mountains. Um, all right. So Zoff is the name of my Python OpenFlow framework. It lets you develop apps that use OpenFlow. Uh, it's open source, MIT license. Uh, it's an alternative to Ryu. Uh, I just want to mention that I don't actually use Ryu. I've never actually used it. I look at it a little bit because it's got a lot of some, I mean, I understand how the design of Ryu and Pox work. They're event-driven frameworks. Um, and one of the things I like about Ryu is their test, their test packet tests are pretty good. Um, so I use those sort of privately. Um, and I also want to mention that Zoff is not an acronym. It doesn't actually mean anything. And I hope it doesn't mean anything. Um, and I tested this with a few American teenagers. And so far, I think we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the, sort of the data sheet thing. Now, I, I buried the lead here. These are the, the, the bottom or the bold are my key differentiators. But I'm just, the rest of the stuff is just sort of stuff I think it should do. Um, so it's a Python OpenFlow framework with apps. Um, apps have handlers that can respond to events to OpenFlow messages. Um, the framework dispatches the received OpenFlow messages to handlers, which may send OpenFlow messages in return. Uh, it supports OpenFlow 1.0 through 1.4 with partial support for 1.5. Uh, the 1.1 one, one and 1.2 one, test, I don't think you'd want to use it uh, because I don't think it's that well tested myself. Um, you're probably going to use 1.3 or above. Um, I support most of the OVS fixed length field, na uh, field names. Um, and uh, for stuff I don't support, like map fields, actions, instructions, it basically escapes to hex. So you can still code it if you know the right hex values for the field name, the field ID, and it's how, it, how many length bytes it has and all that stuff. Uh, support TLS version 1.0 through 1.3. Uh, this is through boring SSL. Um, uh, it's capable of parsing, generating very limited number of protocols. Uh, ARP, IPv4, IPv6, TCP, UDP, LLDP. Um, uh, that's, I, did I mention, oh yeah, ICMPv6, ICMPv4, though the ICMPv6 support, you pretty much have to write most of the extensions because I don't do router advertisements or fun stuff like that. So I did that in Python, but the, uh, if you want to use, produce a higher layer or something that is not support, you have to bring your own parser or generator. Uh, so soft supports the, also supports the creation of apps that emulate switches, so support both sides of the protocol. Um, and you can run them both in the same container, and they sort of, they will route to, they will go through the long path of making TCP connections to itself. Um, and you can write, so you can write an app that pretends to be a switch. Um, and so I have a, a simulator demo that's in the, the framework. So let's get down to the, the, the meaty stuff here. Um, Zoff uses async IO with async await. Uh, async IO was introduced in Python 3.4. The keywords were introduced in Python 3.5, so I require Python 3.5. Now, Python 3.6 supports a little bit more, and it's at least 15% faster. So if you're using this, you want to use Python 3.6. Uh, so Zoff uses a C++ microservice that I wrote that handles the OpenFlow message parsing and construction and it manages the TCP connections and the SSL state and all that stuff. Um, so Zoff communicates with it using JSON RPC. It's actually technically YAML RPC because I have a YAML parser. 
Um, but what result, what the, the OFTR sends up is JSON so that it will be compatible with most programming languages. Uh, and the OpenFlow, the OFTR microservice gives you a declarative language to represent or construct any OpenFlow message. And I'll sort of explain, I'll do demos to show what that means. It's basically you write a YAML <laughs> string and it parses it to OpenFlow. So here's a diagram of faucet app running in Zoff. You notice I'm, I'm hosted in Zoff and it's not in Ryu. Um, there's two parts to this diagram. We have this part over here, which is the software, and we have the test suite, which is basically the only way I have to make sure that it works uh, because I do not have any hardware and I am pretty disconnected from everyone else. Um, so the most amazing thing to me is that the test suite passes and then I say here, and I'm like, you can try this now. And they're like, it works, great, I guess. So, so there's a Docker image you can try. It's, I'll, uh, we'll post that later. Um, let's see. So Zoff uses a separate program in C++ to handle the OF messaging. Uh, right, so let's keep doing an example. So switch one sends a packet in message to OFTR. OFTR translates the message to JSON and sends it to Zoff. Zoff parses the JSON message to a Python dictionary and dispatches it to each app's packet inhaler. Uh, this is the slow path. An app handler can send OpenFlow messages in response. So what you send is a, what Zoff sends is a JSON YAML message to OFTR addressed to a particular switch. Um, there's a data path, you can use data path ID or you can use a connection ID, which is something that I use internally to make sure you're, it's actually going out the right connection. Uh, OFTR translates the JSON message to OpenFlow and sends it out the appropriate connection. So I ported Faucet to run on Zoff and just so for non-programmers, porting means I make changes to the Faucet source code. Uh, so this is not a plugin replacement for you and I don't intend it to be uh, you that has a different API. Um, I tried to make some of the, uh, when dealing with packet, the packet data, I tried to make that API sort of match what Ryu does so that the packet handling stuff says, oh, I want a, a hop limit field. Just give me it on the object and it, it will get it, uh, sort of using duck typing in Python. Uh, so my first check-in on Zoff was in about November 2016. This was before Faucet. I think I started messing around with Faucet in February, March because of the communications of the ACM article. And I saw the test and I said, hmm, wonder if I could make a framework and then I could test it by porting this thing on top of it and then reusing their unit tests because I like to use, reuse people's unit tests. Um, uh, I had, at the time, I had to make some changes to Faucet because you weren't Python 3 literate. Um, uh, so uh, so the, the end result is that Ryu doesn't need to be installed at all. Uh, and just to double down on the cyber RFP thing, uh, I'm just a, uh, a lone guy. I'm a solo software developer. I have no networking hardware, hardware of my own and I was flying blind and Basically, I think we can land with instruments. So that's good. This is just a blow up of that, that process, the soft process. Um, so you can see that connections come in. We dispatch Python events as dictionaries. The way it works is there's one queue. And then eat, this is two apps. And the apps get the event in serially. So that means that if, Zoff, if Faucet is first, then it can do something to like a, a features reply event. And then if the metrics app actually handled that, it would get it second. If the first app, these events are mutable. If the first app modified it, it would get the second app would get the modified version. You can do something with exceptions to prevent other apps from getting events. This is very, it's very simple. Um, and there are also uh, meta, you know, state internal events like start, pre-flight, pre-start, which are things that the 
hosting container sends to apps to say, you're going to change state to do this thing now. And so, so there's a life cycle that an app goes through. Um, but so there's basically these message, message handlers, event handlers. So here are the, these channel up, channel down, features reply, pack it in, port status, error, flow remove. Uh, something about channel up and channel down. There are, th in addition to all the open flow messages, these are the three synthetic messages that I produce. So channel up says this is a data path, new data path is connected. Uh, and it has a data path ID, and we know what its ports are. Um, and the ordering is that you always get a channel up before you get anything else. So what would happen normally is a channel up comes, and then you get the features reply, and then the port, port uh, description reply, uh, if you're listening for it. But it kind of bundles everything up. Channel down is when a switch goes away. And there's a third one called channel alert, which means some, it's a trap. It means you did some, either something happened that you need to know about or, uh, yeah, or, or you can just ignore it. And they're sent, part of it is you can make a programming error and send, try and send a message to something that doesn't exist. And you want to know about that because otherwise you wonder why nothing happened. Um, or you might want to know about open flow packets that I can't parse or there's a whole bunch. It's just a escape hatch for, demons of stupidity. Um, so this is single dispatch. So just a quick list of the life cycle. Things start, apps start in init state. Uh, they, they get a pre-flight event, then they go into pre-start, start and stop, and post-flight. Uh, the three in the middle are async, so that means we've brought up the async event loop, and now you can do stuff like await for something else to happen. Pre-start is special because that's when the connection to OFTR is set up. You know, you send, I'm sending it the uh, SSL certificates I want it to use. I am uh, telling it to listen on these ports. And I don't want, you, you could have apps run concurrently like the metrics app does do pre-start, but you usually wait for start because that's when the connections are all set up. All right, so I just want to do some quick coding examples because uh, I think this makes it actually a lot clearer what's happening. This is a complete Zoff program, and um, it shows the API. There's basically three main APIs you're going to use, Zoff application, Zoff compile, Zoff run, and then the thing returned by a Zoff compile has three methods on it, basically. So this is kind of like the web app frameworks in Python. I chose to use a role request because this message, the first message is pretty small. Um, and so the way this works is you compile this YAML and it has variables in it. So we've got role and generation ID. And what this will do is this, we can then on a channel up event send this message with these uh, arguments. Um, so you, if you run this, you just cite Python and then 01 example.py, and because it's got this is off run here, it will just work. Um, uh, this particular app will require uh, non a greater than 1.0 version of OpenFlow. I'm sort of trying to remember when this was added. Um, if you try to run this under 1.0, it we would get an alert saying I can't send that message because I don't know how. Now you'll notice that this is a send here. Um, this is fire and forget. So we are not waiting for the response. If we wanted to, we could add a message handler for a role reply and do it that way. Um, but what I'm going to show you is a better way to do this in another slide. Okay. Now this is doing the exact same thing, but using a slightly different API. Before we were, uh, we're, we're parsing YAML, a YAML string, and this time we are uh, compiling it here with this OF message thing, which is this thing returned by this function. And we're just generating a Python dictionary because sometimes it's easier to create dynamic things in Python code rather than trying to construct strings. 
and it does the exact same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, this is how I did the faucet port. So if you look at the faucet messages, they're all like this. And see, so, so this is a, a flow mod message. This is why I didn't start with this because it's kind of complicated. Uh, this, uh, we know we have a match, empty match, and instructions, uh, apply actions, output to this port. And then down here, we can fill in the variables. This message will work on all OpenFlow versions. It will backport it to the 1.0 syntax because it's not using anything. It's got one instruction that's apply actions. So it will it will work. Um, and this is, you know, it's a firing forget still. This is the correct way to do a row request. And this is now using async stuff. So we've got an async handler. We can reply to get a reply from this row request and print it. We can start going faster. And here we're doing the same thing with a port stats request. In this case, we're gonna pull it. So the channel comes up and now we await the reply. We Then we wait five seconds and we keep doing it over and over again. Now when, with async tasks, you can start a task and something, it's very easy to forget that it is still running forever. So what this is actually tied to the data path that the event came in. So if the data path disconnects, this will actually get canceled automatically. Uh, any other issue is here, you notice I'm not telling what data path ID to use or a connection. Uh, I could do that, but implicitly it's going to use the one from the message that originated the handler. Um, and this is a way to do a streaming reply if you're doing multi-part. Um, you can use an async for loop. And it does it basically you send the table features reply request and then you can deal with the multiple replies. <laughs> uh, this is how I do fields in the syntax. Uh, it, the top one's kind of obvious. Uh, and then mask. And then there's this, the escape hatch where I don't understand what you are sending because I don't have an ad, haven't added a name for the field yet. Uh, and then this is an ex a, the same thing, but this is an experimenter. Uh, field. Uh, I think it's an ONF experimenter field. And this is how you send a packet out. So uh, you include the packet stuff in the message that you're sending. Uh, basically, the, the fields are all set up. Uh, if you don't send a TTL, we'll figure it out. But if you're using IPv6, ICMPv6 neighbor discovery, you never make sure it's the right value or else no one's going to accept your packet. So I was gonna do a demo now, but I wanted to take questions because it's 20 minutes in and no one's asking me. Oh. Does, does someone want me to do a demo or? So, so the, the cool of those dictionaries, uh, I noticed like, uh, are they just like sensible defaults that you can fields? Right, in the packet in the packet generation? Or, yeah, they'll they'll default to all zeros. If you don't if you don't put an IPv source address in, it's all zero. Currently, it doesn't error on you. In that particular case, um, yeah, I was going to do a demo of showing. You know, one of the issues with this language is if you input something and it's wrong, what happens? You know, if you have a typo, if you miss you misspell a field. Um, so let's just do that quickly. No, this one. So I've got a, a little thing here that shows you. I'm just going to run through this quickly. Right, so you can use this off codec to test the stuff. And what it does is it abuses the Python's codec mechanism to encode open flow packets and then see what they look like. Right, so we can encode a features request just by saying, telling this string to uncode it. Uh, we can decode it again, and it comes out in sort of a canonical format. Uh, 
XID is also added implicitly by Zoff, so that's why you didn't see it in those, those messages. And then now I'm gonna do what's called a round trip. I'm gonna take my text, I'm gonna encode it, and then I'm gonna decode it to the canonical format because that sort of helps. Most people can't read hex, and I, it's not a great demo, so let's just do that. So we can encode, take this, and it converts into this. Take that, and we see that the, yeah, it's a pretty complicated message there. Most of the fields are zeros. Um, uh, there's a schema that helps you learn how this works, uh, and it's in the OFTR command line tool. You type OFTR help, flow mod, and it will dump out a schema that you can copy and paste and then just plug in values. Uh, there's a man page that explains just the schema that I'm using, which is just YAML, and it's it's the mail merge algorithm from Microsoft Word, so you just fill in the things that you need to do. So far, nothing is, oh, something went wrong. Uh, I'm case sensitive, real request has to be up the case. Uh, I use the LLVM YAMLIO library, and it helps make nice error messages for things that are not perfect. So that's the thing, you mean that? Um, you know, we're missing a required key because we misspelled it. Uh, we're missing, we have an unknown key, it's extra, it's not supposed to be there. Uh, is it the same text? Oh, uh, yeah, it's the same text, but I replaced 1,000. Uh, sometimes the constants, you can use integers instead of constants if it knows what it is, but it's gonna try and figure out what the value is. That was probably a mistake in the slide. And you can use regular JSON, YAML is, is JSON. Um, so let me just do this real quickly. So the tool is called OFTR, right? So, oops. And it has its own help system. So, well, another way to do the encoding and decoding is it has, uh, you know, OFTR encode, and then, you know, some YAML file, and it will, you probably want to do dash hex, unless it's terminal, because otherwise you get beeps. Um, and there's an OFTR decode command, which takes binary files and converts them back to YAML, but it can also do PCAT files. Right, so I'm in a faucet sanity test from September when I was having some issues, so I had to copy it to my laptop, and the, the, the faucet tests have really good state to figure out what's going on, including packet captures and logs and things. But we can take that packet capture and decode it. And the first thing it's going to say is, no, I didn't find any packets because it's looking for 6653 or 6633. So I'm just going to tell it not to use a PCAT filter. You know, and it just dumps out everything. And if we want, we can get rid of the echo requests because that's they're annoying. I hope so. So this is just glob syntax. Anything that begins with echo, exclude it. Or you can do include, say, I only want the flow stuff, the flow messages or the packet in, well, the packet ins. Um, I think I'm running out of time. Okay. Um, let's see. So does anyone have any questions on Zoff or OFTR? Well, I guess uh, I mean, there's a huge number of things here to, to like. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, just as a, I'm trying to restrict myself to one question, is it, um, uh, and we should have a, an offline conversation about it, but I'm wondering if there's a, a way that we can get your, uh, to get to do some necessary shimming to get 
for Coastal to speak to as well. Right. And um, I feel like we, we want to consider possibly having that as a, as a permanent fixture that comes in there. So sure. The shimming code is very small. Right. Well, I mean, if, yeah, I mean, we, we, we want to get it in there, and then you know, we can have um, uh, maybe consider having multiple images, like the one that you want, you know, it's all <coughs> it's a matter of course. Um, so that uh, you can continue to do interesting all things mm -hmm. uh, without having to maintain the shim. Yeah, I mean, you you aren't really modifying the shim that much anymore. So I, I mean, I'm I'm happy with the way things are. The way I maintain this is I rebase on top of faucet. So he puts out a release, and then I get rebase, which means I put all my patches on top of it. Um, and that that process has gotten evolved uh, pretty well. Um, if you look, let me figure out how to get to where am I? Here. Uh, so I've got this. The, if you look at the GitHub repository for this, this is called branch port five because branch port one, two, three, and four were previous things where I was not rebasing. So I pretty much saw it on, on rebase. Um, any more questions? Go. Uh, it wasn't clear to me during the packet in, is the internal packet, is that decoded? Yes, right yes, sorry, yeah, that's decoded the same way as the packet out. In OFTR. And in OFTR, OFTR, and then it gets to JSON. Okay, so if you want to support more protocols, then you just have to send to OFTR. Well, you could take that. Out. You, well, you, can, you get the header that I, under the last header I understand, and then I tell you the offset where I don't know anything beyond this point. Okay. So, um, This is somebody that's in it. Oh, sorry. Well, do you want to yeah, go one, two? Sure. Or do you want to go? Good question. Um, so I knew I was speaking, I knew I would get that question. Mm -hmm. So I started performance enhancing testing like very recently. Um, so the architecture here, it depends on what you're talking about with performance. Latency is going to be an issue because we've got to go two hops. Um, and I've got to try and make it as fast as possible. Throughput might get better because we can parallelize. Uh, we've got OFTR doing stuff while the top layer, layer is doing stuff. It turns out that when you do throughput testing, the bottleneck is the Python, and the OFTR layer is, is a lot faster. And what happens is, because I don't have flow control implemented, and I, OFTR buffers everything it is outputting to the upper layer, it gets stuck with a big buffer. And then the Python, when you stop the test, the Python code keeps processing all those packet ins until the buffer clears. Um, and that's to do to the bottleneck is the JSON deserialization in Python. So I'm thinking of switching that to a binary serialization using concise binary object representation, which is basically YAML, JSON, Seabor, they're all that ecosystem, that, that model of how to represent data. But that's where I am now. Okay. Um, one of the things that we have to do to take a lot of care of uh, in Fawcett is that you know, something turned up on our doorstep and it's just got to deal with that. Um, so um, another way to, to have something where we don't, don't necessarily have to block food, but perhaps offload to solve say, please help me protect from myself. Right, rate limiting. Um, you know, I can do rate limiting at that layer very easily, uh, or load shedding. Um, another thing that could potentially help is that, that Fawcett does a lot of sort of mundane, boring stuff like answering ICMP echoes for, for virtual IPs that don't really require any state to do. You have to do it. But it's just work. Um, other things like, um, I mean, you don't do LLDP discovery, but that sort of, that processing where you're continually doing stuff. I mean, it, the, the OFTR layer would know all the ports and know all the hardware MAC addresses if I added that. Right now it doesn't, it's stateless. Um, yeah, it would be fantastic that opportunity to say, you know, for something that, you know, like responding to it, because it doesn't actually involve a change in the controller state, but 
and someone else could do that for us, what would we? Right. That's really the same thing. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. That would, yeah, you know, so it would require programming in it. So it would be cherry picking the things that are the most important, I think, to start. That's how I would do it. Um, so, uh, you're you, you, you running courses, are you doing you gauge as well? Right, so I, I port in gauge because I need the tests to work. Right. Um, I also have a, a in async IO, the way you're currently doing some things, conf is somewhat dangerous in the sense that it is that you are using some things that are blocking APIs and that could potentially block my event loop. Um, so, but if you're running Gauge separately, that's not an issue really. Uh, if you run Gauge, I mean, you don't recommend running Gauge and Faucet in the same Ryu instance, um, but I would like to have a metrics app that runs in Faucet that can do port, port information sort of on demand and that would, I've sort of made my own little thing. It's not quite compatible with Jage, and it's sort of early stages. Uh, and but. the other thing is just, um, so, so how, how much do you need to change Valve for this to work? Change faucet? Uh, valve. Oh. And the Valve. Yeah. The valve <laughs> Let's look at it. Because I mean, the idea would be you shouldn't have to change the Valve. <coughs> I have to change Valve.pi just a little bit just because my events look different from reuse. Let's just see what what the comparisons are here. Um, so I have my own little Docker stuff. Um, just as in, in let's see. Uh, oh yeah, I did not mention that um, I do support the pipeline stuff, but I use YAML instead. And yeah, the, so the way this this works is you can it just. The idea is you can just read these YAML file messages from a file and you don't have to do anything. It will just send them. So if you need to send other messages, it's very easy to just update this file with the YAML that you want to send. Um, there's a program that converts your JSON to this format. Uh, so that's just the same more, more uh, and here's the program that does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times I have to do things like this because I don't have Ryu installed and I have my own constants that I use that map to the Ryu constants. So a lot of the changes are just import, cha you know, one line imports. Um, I mean, theoretically, we could do this using the video that we just convert that and also into. Yeah, we have a valve inscription. So here's the valve file. Uh, I do pipeline a little differently. I have to get rid of the, the Ryu imports. Uh, uh, this isn't, uh, yeah, I use percent %R um, because it gives, these are JSON dictionaries. Um, and yes, uh, yeah, see this is where I have to fix up things like Ethernet source and Ethernet test. The Ryu API says source and test. This is somewhat ambiguous in my mind, but. So I mean, theory of maybe, but Abstract all of this up and have like a this have valve import um, force it away Right. Yep. Yeah. So the OF lib, when I get to that, we'll see all the changes are in valve OF. There's just ton of it's it's so big that GitHub won't even display it. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's so the, not, the it's not, not typically. Right. So any of these files that it's displaying are are, are small changes. So it's it's fine. Yeah, we, we should we should put more about this stuff in. It's fantastic. Thank you. All right.